Hi, welcome Steve to another preview of our August the 13th auction. Just in time, a gentleman has just walked in, an English gentleman, to consign some magnificent antique English silver tray, this ink set, the candelabras here. Nice, nice set coming up on August the 13th for you silver buyers. Over here we have a beautiful signed A. Cipriani, slightly as is, but from a local estate, nice size. Here we have from Connecticut, all the way from Bridgeport, Connecticut, we have a very rare Victorian East Lake with gilt decoration secretary abatant. Uh, for our mid-century buyers, we have this rosewood and chrome two-drawer desk, one of my favorite pieces of the sale. I like the mid-century. On top, we have our uh, seals just for the uh, animal lovers, bronze seals from a contemporary artist. Over here, we have a cobalt to clear art deco mirror. This piece here you see is in our September sale. We're previewing some stuff from September. Moving right along, we have this magnificent Art Deco marble top telephone stand. You don't see as many as you used to. The Grand, Car the Grand Concourse used to be full of them, nearly a bad verbal mistake there. On top, we have a very large bronze sign, PJ Menet. Beautiful, beautiful bronze. We've estimated this 10 to 15,000. It's been tough finding stuff in August, but we, as usual, we have managed it. We have another, this comes from a Long Island estate. We have another good sized bronze here after Carrier. Moving into the main room, we're going to let you scope the room while I get ready to talk to you. One of my favorite pieces came from a woman in Manhattan, this beautiful rocker, looks like it's Hoffman or one of those, very stylistic, nice leather, beautiful patina. Hopefully it's not just a Tone Bentwood rocker. Um, and while you're scanning, you can see we have a big mixture of art, mid-century rugs, paintings, chandeliers. Bruce and Neely will be on to help talk about some of the other items as well. We have people here for the walk-in Wednesday, so you'll see them walking about. This is a, you know, a very nice country piece, three-drawer etagere. You can tell it's probably about 1850. I don't know how well it'll do, but we like it. We like some funky stuff like this. Here we have a magnificent Ewood dining room table, big, big table with pedestal. China cabinet over there. Moving right along, a beautiful pair of mid-century chairs here. They look like they might be robes John Gibbings or one of those. Nice lines to them. Here's a typical pair of French Art Deco chairs. Nice quality. We have a Regency sofa table here. As you're passing by, we've got some magnificent leaded glass windows. We have carpets. We have this really fine quality and down-filled, beautiful French 19th century settee, beautiful carving on it. We have this nice Art Deco, or to mid-century mirrored and beveled table here with these three small little mid-century occasional tables. And right here we have a beautiful signed easel made by an English maker, an English frame maker. I've forgotten the name at present, but it's on our site. So any of you big New York frame makers that would like, art dealers would like this. Right here with another pair of mid-century chairs. We have a nice burl walnut mid-century little dinette set here. We have a beautiful mid-century deco chest. Over here, a contemporary silver leaf. Even for your used furniture people, we cater this time. It is August, so we have a good mixture. We have a nice leather sofa from Manhattan. Over here, we have a beautiful little Ewood barrel top secretary, together with a three-piece, probably Horner uh, carved mahogany set. I would say Horner. We have a nice um, 19th century multi-drawer hunt table over here for all the country lovers. Uh, as you can see as you're scanning, we've got chandeliers, we have mahogany dining room sets, we have a marble top and bomb marquetry French commode here, probably early 20th century. <coughs> and uh, quite nice, came from a Long Island state. Beautiful pair of bronze gates. I'll let Bruce talk about them because he knows more of the provenance. We have a very nice, possibly Handel lamp. Triple pedestal dining room table, together with eight chairs with nice little swan relief on them. Standing atop a beautiful Aubazon carpet. And one of my favorite pieces of the stale here, Steve, is this nice Anglo-Indian carved camel. Just nicely done. Nice and decorative, good talking piece for the house, you know. Right next to the Louis Vuitton suitcase that came over on its hump there a while ago. I'm going to pass you on now to Bruce and let Bruce continue the rest of it. Thank you, and I'll see you at the sale. Thanks, Ron. I'll continue from here with our walkthrough. A pair of mid-century Danish tables designed by Finn Yule and retailed by John Stewart. 
good condition, being sold with another mid-century coffee table. I think this is by Greta Jock. Two separate leaded glass windows, both of them very unusual. It's too bad this one's strapped to the wall. It's sort of a ice, icicle glass, I call it, or textured glass. Arts and crafts in perfect condition. And here's a beautiful leaded glass window. It should be hanging horizontally, and I wish it had light through it, but it's got these wonderful swirled bottle bottom sort of insets. And here, Steve, a banjo clock, an American early mid-19th century banjo clock, but we've just discovered today that the case is stamped DLW. I'm not exactly sure who it is. It's not one of the Willards. It looks like a Willard banjo clock, but it's certainly going to be something to interest banjo clock collectors. And here, Steve, a pair of mid-century, we call them possibly Italian, but they could be Baccarat, they could be Val St. Lambert. They're a beautiful big pair of glass mid-century lamps. Here, a pair of yellow Chinese lamps. They may just be mid-century, mid-20th century decorator lamps, or they might be a little earlier. We haven't taken them apart. And here, my favorite thing in this auction is a pair of gilt bronze gates, Art Deco. The estate they came from says they came from the Roxy Theater. We haven't been able to prove that yet, but it hasn't been disproven either. In either event, they're beautiful uh, deco, gilt bronze deco gates. And here a George, a Georgian bachelor's chest desk, 18th century English. Bracket feet, nice high bracket feet, original bale handles and escutcheons. Very handsome piece of mahogany furniture. Steve, I know Ron already spoke about this Middle Eastern camel table, but it's really my favorite thing in the sale. It, it's hard to get a, an idea of just how beautifully and finely carved it is. If you could close up on this and on his face. And he's got a beautiful face and a beautiful expression to his eyes. I just think it's the nicest piece of this type of furniture that I've seen. No bone inlay, but other than that, it's pretty perfect. And quite large, as you can see. And in this room, Steve, this bamboo or rattan set just came in today. It's a nice mid-century set. Has Two armchairs, a settee, and two side tables with glass tops. I bet it dates to at least the 50s, maybe the 40s. In very good original condition and finish. A large cabinet, three-part cabinet, came out of a house in Stamford, Connecticut. But the woman insisted that her parents, when they bought it many, many years ago, that it came from a ship from an ocean liner, which is possible. It's three sections. Not sure about that. Beautiful uh, Circassian walnut. We're missing this one pull, but the estate says they have it. Don't hold me to it. They're beautiful. It's beautiful deco hardware. A stickly, a contemporary stickly bedroom set. We're selling it in three different lot, lots. The tall chest, a pair of nightstands, and then the bed, long chest, and mirror is the third lot. Mint condition, out of an apartment on Park Avenue. A pair of art pottery lamps that just came in today. They're either Rookwood or Weller. We haven't taken them apart to see on the bottom. And here, maybe not the most valuable, but one of our most interesting things in the auction is a collection of late 19th and early 20th century medals, ribbons for the Letter Carri Carriers Association for Mailmen, National Association for Letter Carriers. An Asian teapot, let me put that down, Chinese or Japanese cloisonne, but very unusual. Look at the spout. Very, very unusual. 
Probably the rarest thing in the auction, possibly the rarest thing in the auction, is this little gilt bronze Tiffany and Company postal scale, but it's in a rare pattern called 9th century. A pair of Rookwood bookends, owl bookends. Not quite as rare, but wonderful. And here, something we've had a lot of interest in is a bronze and ivory figure of a knight signed. It escapes me at the moment who it is, but it's on our website. Beautiful quality and beautiful patina. Large groups of bronzes, sometimes to be sold in a whole tray lot here, Grand Tour, little Grand Tour, Italian bronzes, European bronzes. If you can see through this glass, Steve, three 19th century, or a cut glass one is probably early 20th century, two 19th century opaline glass dresser boxes. This is quite a large one. Just in yesterday from a local estate, a Chinese silver-plated bronze Chinese teapot. Again, with beautiful detail and signed. We're gonna let our buyers figure out that signature. And here, a mid-century Judaica sculpture, Shabbat Shalom, signed and dated 1978. We haven't quite been able to figure out the artist yet but it's really a wonderful piece of mid-century sculpture besides being utilitarian. That's gonna wrap it up for me, Steve, and we'll turn it over to Nelia, who will discuss the art we have in our upcoming sale. Thanks very much and hope to see you at the auction. Steve, just one, Steve, just one more item. I know Ron panned this silver. It just came in about a half an hour ago, but now we know that this late 18th century, early 19th century George III silver tray is made by a Jewish silversmith. Uh, we think his name is Naphtali Hart in London. And the hallmarks are right here, if you can get a good shot of that. That's all I wanted to add to this, Steve. We'll turn it over to Nelia now. Thank you, Bruce. We'll finish up here with the fine art. As always, there's an eclectic mix of pieces for you this sale. We have mid-century modern, uh, going back to 18th and 19th century portraits. Here is a Latin American work by Frank Gonzalez, a 1958 large oil on masonite. Moving right along, we have several prints in this sale. Uh, this one up top is a Jean Moreau limited edition dry point etching, a small edition of 30. So kind of a rare print. Following over here we have, this is two of four works by Luigi Cagliani, Italian artist, but look like Parisian street scenes. We also have several prints by Louis I. Cart. These are two of them. They will be sold as a pair together. Also dry point etchings uh, with the original watermarks. Right here in the center, a nice bronze of a family of seals by Jacques and Mary Regat. Nice signed piece. More contemporary. Uh, over here also is a Harry Myers oil, a sweet scene of ballerinas, American artist. And just down to your left, we have a Jay Thornley marine scape. Also a very nice painting. We'll move on into the main room where I'll, I'll show you some of the other pieces coming up. Over here in the center, uh, I think Ron may have shown you this easel. Uh, it is by M. Greavy and Company, a London and New York frame maker, nice old easel. Over here we have a Italian painting by Nicolai Briganti out of a Long Island home. And moving right along, we have a Paul Darciguinavi 
French American uh, painter, but this looks like a European scene, uh, beautiful detail, charming village. And just up above it is another Louis I cart, and that's the third one in the sale. This one will be sold on its own. Sleeping Beauty there. This is a nice Trump Loyal uh, oil on canvas. We just identified the artist today. It's Benedict Masson, a French artist. Beautiful decorative painting, a nice large size, and a really uh, ornamental frame. This work right here, I think, is just beautifully painted. It's a neoclassical scene. We don't have a signature on it, unfortunately, but you can see the quality and the softness and the rich tones, um, you know, and the skin and facial features. Moving back to sort of mid-century, uh, this is a 1957, also oil on masonite, a Haitian painter named Andre Bucard. It has a great feel to it. Nice kind of w WPA style. A primitive winter scene by Forrest K. Moses. I think we have estimated at $800 to $1,200. This is what he's known for, these primitive village scenes. And up above it, moving back, we have actually a Thomas Gainsborough oil, although we've called it School of Gainsborough. We don't have a signature. There's an inscription on the back and a nice plaque on the front. Uh, so it is likely an 18th century portrait out of a Westchester estate, a, a large estate. From the same estate, actually, we have this beautiful portrait as well. You can see the detail here, the quality of this portrait. Also, both paintings were uh, presumably purchased at Sotheby's numerous years ago. Uh, one does have old Sotheby's labels on the back. This one, again, no signature, but a beautiful painting. We have a beautiful beach scene by well-known Russian artist Nikolai Tchaikovsky, estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. We will finish up here on this great Hans Hermann, uh, also beach scene, but you can see a, a boat about to depart, a German landscape, uh, estimated 15 to 2,500 dollars. I think it's one of the best paintings in this auction. So as usual, there are a lot of things to see and we hope to see you Monday evening. Thanks.